Right. Okay. Uh, I think you know without wasting too much time in introduction talk, let let just uh, go uh, straight into the into the presentation. You know, like if you if you guys you know you can't uh, uh, hear anything, uh, just you know uh, just to give give a shout on the chat window, uh, and then and then we will uh, we will respond. So I'll just hand over to Ricardo. So he's going to go through the presentation. Hello, morning everyone. So as Saravana said, I'm gonna go and. Uh, Go through the presentation, and we'll I'll try to do it uh, uh, fast so that we have more time to look at the product, which I think is the more interesting part. So I'll go ahead and start. Um, so you you all, all of you have worked with Jayfoss, otherwise you wouldn't be here, and you you know that there are a bunch of challenges these days uh, with Jayfoss, and. Um, what we're trying to do with this talk, which you see, is, is addressing the the most important challenges that you have with uh, with this talk these days. And so let's go through the list of five key challenges that we identify. So one one of the problems that uh, everyone faces when putting an application into production is getting someone else that is not this talk person to be able to do some sort of support for your this talk applications. So and the uh, in BizTalk today, it's very hard to get that done uh, unless that person has some sort of BizTalk knowledge. Then, if you have multiple uh, individuals acting against one BizTalk system, you will also have another difficulty, which is understanding who did what and when. And so the governance and auditing story of BizTalk right now is very limited. So there is only very few things you can know when they were done and by whom. Then, when when we're talking about also having a lot of people accessing your system, you can you can definitely see there is a lot of limitations in terms of how can they access the system and what can they access. Right now, we just have two BizTalk groups. You have uh, the BizTalk administrators and BizTalk operators. And the BizTalk administrators is a too powerful access level, so you can do everything you want. And then on the other side, you also have the based off operators group, which is uh, gives you too much in a certain way because you can access all of the applications, and then gives you a very unflexible uh, access to the other features. Uh, so it's it's very limited, and in that because of that, what ends up happening is that uh, customers do not use that group at all. So everyone's running uh, as a based off administrator, and so everyone. So we have to trust everyone that is accessing the system uh, to be able to uh, to work as you expect. So it's a running a system based on trust rather than uh, having a proper access and authorization. And then because of all of these, uh, the trust that you will have on sharing a desktop environment between different groups in your organization is um, decreased significantly because of all these previous challenges. And based on being such a, a significant investment in your organization, it's um, it's something that you always want to do, right? So you want to have one single based on, uh environment for all of your integrations. But because of these limitations, it's often not the case that you will build multiple environments. And then the, the last challenge identified here is the monitoring. So right now, monitoring this talk is, is not a trivial thing. So out of the box, there is no monitoring capability. And um, the, the proposed solution by using SCOM can be quite a complex one to implement. So it can take weeks, sometimes months, to implement such a monitoring solution and can, can be uh, uh, quite hard to achieve what you want to monitor. So let me go on to the next slide. And so what we're trying to do here with this all 360 is address all of these uh, uh, key challenges that we identified. And we're doing that with a, a, a single tool that will uh, give you access to all the data you need, providing you a comprehensive and complex security model and also the monitoring capabilities. Actually, uh, we built Bistol 360 around four core pillars. So that's uh, 
security is one of the pillars of so giving you access to a, uh, a more advanced model, then giving you the ability to operate your desktop environment uh, from a, a, a single location and with um, on top of that with governance and auditing information being generated. And also then another pillar, data access, so pulling together all the data that is relevant for your environment. Uh, and also building a monitoring capability so that you can easily and fast uh, monitor your desktop environment. So let's go and dig a little bit on each of these areas. So I'll start with security and also governance and auditing. So um, as I mentioned before, right now, if you, you can see here on the left hand side the experience you already have. So you might have three different roles in your business environment. And uh, all of them right now, they see pretty much the same thing. Um, they, uh, everyone will see all the applications, even if they have uh, different roles. And most likely, they will be running as desktop administrator. So on top of v viewing exactly the same thing, uh, they will also be able to do exactly the same thing, which in case of Tom that we have here, which is a BASOC guy, uh, which is the BASOC administrator, is okay to, um, to actually see everything uh, and do everything. But when we're talking about John or Claire that work for a specific departments, that their concerns are limited to just um, certain uh, areas of the BASOC deployment, uh, then these experience in the admin console is way too much. And what we are showing here on the right hand side is that you can, uh, in BizTalk 360, you can specify a security role that will uh, scope down what these users can see to what they really need. So they will only be able to see the applications they need and not, they will only be able to use the features they need. So their experience is much more comprehensive. And so if you have to train them to support their BizTalk applications, it will be much, much easier. There isn't much they can do that will go in the wrong direction. And so it's, it's very fast and easy to train them. So right now, because of these that we enabled, so the ability to create a user access policy, uh, you're not limited to just being a BizTalk administrator or a BizTalk operator. You can create your custom roles. And uh, you can do that by assigning permissions to a particular user or an NT group. And then you can assign which applications you want that user to be able to access. And then also which operations can you perform on the applications. And also um, which data can be accessed and which features can be accessed. So it's quite a complex and, uh, and rich uh, security model. On top of that, you know, because one thing is giving access to your system. Another thing is understanding what people are doing. And so if something uh, is, has happened and you don't understand why, you might want to go and tra trace back what did my users did. And um, by using BizTalk 360, you have that automatically. Any action that changes the system, let's say any change in an artifact, any change in a service instance or a host instance, will create an audit log. And so you can go back to that log and you can visualize what has been done and by who and at what time. And so you can understand why is your system behaving as, um, as it is at the moment. And so by all of these that I just described uh, around security and governance, we are enabling these, uh, these uh, things uh, that I'm describing here. So you will have an adaptable and customizable user, user interface that is adjusted to what your users will really need and not showing everything that will just confuse them. So you, by doing this, and you will be able to easily provide access to business users. You'll be, it will be way easier to train non all people. You can even create a, a read-only um, access like for business users or first level support. And even additionally, and that's a very interesting scenario that a lot of customers implement, is to remove access from uh, support people to the best of machines and associated machines such as SQL Server. So we uh, enable all the features that you need when you're doing day-to-day -day operations so you can remove that access. And because of this, that you are segmenting your desktop environment so well, uh, sharing a desktop environment is something that you will be able to do uh, uh, for when you start using this talk, basically. 
And let's go for operations and administration. So, you know that to, today uh, there is quite a challenge uh, because of the number of tools that you are using. Um, just a second, I'm, I'm hearing some noise. I'm gonna... Ground level, they know. <laughs> Okay, so noise is back to normal. And so as I was describing, so right now you're using a lot of tools. So normally you're talking about five to that ten different tools to, to manage the BISOC system. You you will be using obviously the BISOC admin console, but that's not limited to it. You will also be using SQL Management Studio, you'll be using even viewer, performance monitor, BAM uh, portal, and ESP eventually. Um and so what we are doing is uh, replacing all of that with just one single console, and that console will allow you to uh, do all the other all the functionalities important for someone supporting the desktop environment. And this console is not only doing that, but it also allows you to access through the web. So you to be able to access your desktop environment, you only need to know the URL, um, and that that can be quite convenient. So, and additionally, we also have a, a group of productivity tools and health check tools that you have access to, and let me dive into that. Uh, so, we, we highlighted here most, the most important productivity tools in this office history. And one of them is ability to access the event viewer across the whole environment. So, you don't need to access each of the machines individually and, uh, and connect through RDP or, or directly connecting the event viewer, uh, because you can. Uh, the advanced event viewer functionality will do that for you, and it will enable a rich querying capability. Then we also enabled the integration of knowledge uh, into BizTalk 360. So you can actually, so the knowledge that normally these days you are putting in a SharePoint or a Wiki, uh, you can actually put it in a place where you need it, right into the tool when you are managing your BizTalk environment. Um, and we do that across the product in event logs or uh, suspended instances uh, and throttling phase, for instance. Then we also allow you to uh, use uh, custom SQL queries. This will enable you to remove access to SQL Server directly, and it will be enable you to control which queries are run against this all. And so, and additionally, you can also define who can run the queries uh, and down to the level of the query. And then last feature here is the graphical method for viewer, which allows you a rich way to visualize tracking data in your BizTalk environment. So oftentimes people that whenever they need to look at tracking information, they think it's not very easy to understand what happened in BizTalk. We put it in a graphical way so that you understand the message flow going through BizTalk. Then on the health check tools front of this talk, we, um, we do have a backup DR visualizer. DR is something that is a critical in your environment. And what we are pulling here is all the important information to know that DR, backup and DR are working as, as is expectable. Then we also have like a tool to do analyze throttling, which is called throttling analyzer. And uh, it does uh, help you with not needing to understand and to do, go through the painful process of understanding throttling. So we collect all the information and present it to you in a very easy way so that you can act on whatever the reason is for throttling to be happening. And then last option here is the message box viewer integration. So message box viewer is a well-known community tool that is very respected and, uh, and it works very well. So what we are doing is we're running that on your behalf and we send you the, we sorry, we uh, uh, parse the results of that report and put it in our tool so that it's easier for you to access this information. Uh, and you can actually also schedule it to run uh, so that you will have uh, automatically this being done. And actually that's a best practice. You should do it once a day to, to verify if there is any problems. Okay, and this leads me to the next, um, um, section, which is the monitoring and notification. So uh, we, we talked about that monitoring is not an easy, easy thing these days. And what we are actually uh, accomplishing here is 
providing you a simple way to configure uh, uh, monitoring. It shouldn't take you too much time. So uh, a lot of tools, they, they can take like weeks and months to implement, and we want that to be just a few hours. So it obviously, it will depend on the number of applications you have, but the idea is that it will be very easy to configure and achieve the monitoring rules that you want to achieve. And then in terms of what are we covering, we're covering all the things that you would expect, like uh, within the base stock applications, we are checking for receive locations, send ports, operations, and service instances. We're also doing uh, monitoring against the base stock environment specifics, such as checking for base stock host instances or uh, running some custom database queries that can validate if your particular applications are running as expected or checking against web endpoints to validate if they are correctly responding and up and running. Then we also have like basic level monitoring against the desktop servers and SQL servers. Uh, so we do disk level monitoring, CPU and memory. We do monitor the event logs and MP services. Uh, so basic level monitoring against the server, either this or SQL. And then specifically to SQL Server, we also validate and, uh, and monitor SQL instances, uh, specifically the SQL jobs, which are very important for this talk. And we check the, the job states, the execution results. And so you can uh, check all the important things within SQL Server. OK. And so as you build these monitoring capabilities and don't figure them, Automatically, we will be generating a monitoring dashboard. This is the kind of dashboard that we will put on a operations room so that people can have can keep an eye on the system and understand if something is going wrong. Um, so this is dynamically created based on whatever you decided to monitor. And um, uh, additionally, so be, besides monitoring what you expect us to monitor, which is everything that is BizTalk related. We also have some BizTalk specific monitoring capabilities. One of them is monitoring service instances on a per application basis. And this allows for very interesting scenarios. Like one of the most obvious is checking for suspended messages. So if I have more than a certain amount of suspended messages, I want to be alerted to understand what's going wrong with my system. But also, it's important to know sometimes if I have too many active instances, it might mean that my system is slow or that I'm reaching capacity, or even dehydrated uh, instances. Uh, if I have some downstream system that is being slow, I will have a lot of them. So if, if you can define thresholds and then uh, be notified if a certain threshold is uh, being violated, and then you can go and look into your best system and be as proactive as possible. Another capability here is um, that we are not just simply monitoring for for things that are running. We are actually monitoring uh, if they are running as expected. So you define what the expected state, which can be stopped. And in a lot of cases, that's what it makes sense. It's very, very common that you will have some artifacts in your desktop environment that are off, and they are supposed to be like that. And you can do that with desktop 360. And if something is actually started that shouldn't be, you will also be alerted of that. And the last point here is uh, process monitoring. Uh, so this is a capability that enables you to validate if a certain message flow uh, or a certain receive location or send port is actually processing what's supposed to be. And you can configure a process monitor to say the number of messages you expect a certain location to execute. Uh, and, um, and then you can also define what's your business hours. Like you can say 9 to 5 and weekdays. And then we are validating if that mm, uh, port is processing that. This is, this is a, a very helpful for scenarios where if you don't process a message, you will get into a problem, which is a typical banking problem uh, if you don't meet the, the SLA by processing and sending messages until a certain specific time of the day. And these are unique capabilities on uh, this top uh, front. OK, and the um, last slide of the deck is, uh, so we are, uh, being trusted by a lot of customers. We have over 100 customers. And so we have been in the base of world, which it's a significant number. We have uh, been, uh, uh, we are a proven uh, software uh, in uh, in the world of base talk. Yeah. I'm going to okay. hand it over to Saravana now and let's uh, go into the demo.
Yeah, I think let's get, let's get get back to the the real stuff. You know, like uh, I just wanted to you know focus less on the demonstration side. So the customer side, you know, a hundred plus doesn't may not look big, but you know, being in the market only for a couple of years, and then given the size of the desktop market, it's a significant number. Probably you can all all can understand. So let's go back to the the, the demo side. Like there are there are a lot of things in Bistock 360. Like in, in in the interest of time, we have about you know like 40 minutes uh, from now. Uh, we have, we just classified the into you know the three top areas we wanted to focus on. So two, I will do a presentation on the monitoring notification side, and then Ricardo will do a demonstration on the especially on the security user access policy side of the application. And finally, I'll come and cover the rest of the stuff, like you know, like uh, the various things, like a uh, ESB portal, DAM portal, message box, your advanced user, etc. And then we'll wrap it up. So let's let me let me get into the uh, uh, le le let me get into the the monitoring aspect of uh, Bistro 360. So one of our key goals with uh, Bistro 360 monitoring is to make it as simple as possible when it comes to monitoring. You know, like at the moment, it's it's kind of a it's a complex. You know, to to configure something like Storm or HP Open Open View Operation Manager or IBM Pivoli or something like that, it takes a lot of effort. So we wanted to make it you know very simple to configure it and manage it. So let me show a demo like how you can do it. So I just moved into you know the monitoring section and then you got a, this navigation. Like the first thing is a manage alarms and you got a bunch of things underneath. So the very first thing you need to do is go to new alarm, and I'm just going to say, for example, December uh, demo. Just so you can define any name you want, and then you can put a uh, you know like a bunch of email addresses uh, for here. Uh, I'm just going to going to put my hotmail, for example, just for simplicity, and you can put a description. And uh, this is very generic. You like, define a name and then put an uh, email addresses. And the next screen, you know, you've got various parameters you can tune in, like, you know, the, the, it, it, which all constitutes to be the threshold setting. So alert on threshold violation. And you can tell, you know, like how, how long the situation should persist. Uh, it, this is very useful because, you know, in this talk, there could be a lot of intermittent issues, right? So, you know, the database connectivity loss and then the host is disabled, but it, it came back automatically, those kind of intermittent issues you don't want to get too much noise in your in your inbox so you can say okay if it's 10 minutes it's okay like if the system recovers within 10 minutes it's okay otherwise notify me but for this demo i'll just say two minutes and also you got various other things so you can limit the number of email notification you wanted to receive so you know when there is a problem you don't want to get you know hundreds of emails saying the same thing again and again and again so you can restrict it to say okay if it's free uh, then, then, then that's fine. And also, you can say notify when things become normal. This is very important as well. You know, you you, you might have received a notification saying, <clears throat> sorry, your host instance is down, but if somebody goes and fix fix it up, you wanted to get notified saying okay, that's been fixed and everything looks good. So if you want that, you can you can you can choose that as well. Uh, and also, the, the this is the, the second part is also you know you can restrict the monitoring between a certain window as well. Because what we have seen is uh, a lot of customers, you know, like it's not 24/7 business. They are only, you know, nine to five or nine to six kind of thing, and they don't want, they don't care. Like you know, your environment is down after six o'clock in the evening. It, it may not be applicable to all of you, but there are the business out there who who work primarily during the business hour. So for them, they can say, oh, you know, for me, the threshold condition is only between the start and the end time, Monday to Friday or whatever days you want. So you you can set it, but if you not if you not the only setting I changed here is just uh, two minutes and everything else I left it to default. And the next set of uh, thing you can do on the alarm is we call it something called status alert or a health check kind of alert. You know, like if you if you analyze like a lot of people, uh, uh, they they do a daily health check. You know, somebody in the team just logs into the system at ten o'clock in the morning and make sure everything is running as expected. There are not too many suspended instances. All the receive locations are running. Uh, the disks are OK. The memory is OK. All those kind of regular health checks. We have seen like a lot of big companies allocate one guy. His job is to make sure everything is running every day. So for those kind of scenarios, you can say, OK, Monday to Friday, I wanted to get a report on 10 o'clock in the morning. OK, what's my overall health of my environment? 
So there is a difference here. So this is not a threshold. You know, you will just get a status report saying, okay, this is all. It's everything looking green. So you are you are good. So that that kind of information is called status alert. But it's optional. You know, if you don't want it, you don't need to configure it. And also we have some advanced features like you know you can send notifications via SMS. And we also have, say we have first class integration with HP Operation Manager because. A lot of enterprise customers use HP Operation Manager as their preferred monitoring solution across the company, uh, but their, their BizTalk story is very, very weak. You know, like uh, we we probably shouldn't tell that HP is one of our customers. So they, when it comes to BizTalk, you know, like uh, their their monitoring story is is very weak. So what we have done is all you can get all the benefits out of BizTalk 360 and just simply say. Send me all the alerts to HP OpenView Console. Then you know you'll get the alerts right in the console, and they don't need to worry about you know who is sending those kind of alarms. So it's more it, it acts more like a management pack for HP Operation Manager. You can also write it to an event viewer like with the event ID. So this helps if you, know, if you want to integrate this with some other monitoring tool you're using in now, like a, a Solar Winds or you know uh, or uh, or uh, Manage Engine or or IBM Tivoli or whatever. So you, because most of those guys will have ability to read a event viewer, so you 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 can do that as well. But for all these things, you know, I'm just leaving everything open. So if you see, if if I summarize what I have done, I just created an alarm. I just gave a name, email address, and set it to two minutes. That's all I did so far. So it's a very simple step. It will take two minutes. And once that's done, you can go to different sections. Say for example, I can go to application. And I can say I wanted to monitor this EDI application. You open up, and you can see there are all the alarms are available for this one. I said December demo, and I can go to receive locations, and then say or orchestrations, and they say I wanted to monitor all the orchestrations, and they say I wanted the expected state to be started. And you can see it, it gone red automatically because the current state is actually stopped. And we are asking it to be running, so it's actually a violation of the condition. This can happen in your environment, right? You want those orchestrations to be running. So this is how quickly you can actually set up a monitoring. You can do that for say everything. So go to send port and say I wanted the expected state to be starter, and in this case you can see it's green because it's matching. And you can go to receive location and you can do the do the uh, the same thing. And also. So one important thing is something called process monitoring. So what you can do, you can set up monitor saying, okay, I'm expecting five messages uh, uh, every hour or something. You can say five. Uh, you can either day, say hour or a business day. And my business day is between you know nine to uh, five in the evening. And I wanted to monitor it for all the days or Monday to Friday. So this uh, once you set it up, basically you enabled the process monitoring. You can see number one appearing. And this is the condition you have set. And you can actually have multiple conditions. You're not restricted to one. Say maybe you may expect 20 messages between 2 to 3 in the afternoon or 50 messages between 7 and 8 in the evening. So all those kind of various parameters can be adjusted, can be configured, and the system will keep keep monitoring it. And also, you know, the next thing is, you know, you can maybe this is for EDI application, but you can say, okay, I wanted also as part of this, uh, this alarm, I wanted to monitor another application called simple messaging. And you can say go to service instances, and they say, okay, I wanted to monitor, uh, make sure there are only you know so many suspended instances in this application. So you can say if it's 10, it's a warning level. If it's 20, it's a error, and the current count is nine. So you can say just click, and then you can you basically you know you can you can you can enable monitoring for that. So you can you know this is at the at the at the application level you're clubbing you know it's very it's very open like you know you're defining everything yourself, but it's also very easy to do it. And you, next, you go to BizTalk server, and then it will automatically list all the servers in your environment. You click on one of the one of the servers, and you still keep the same alarm. And say, I wanted to make monitor all the disks. You can change all these values based on your requirement, but it, you know it, you can monitor it. And go to system resources, and say you wanted to monitor the CPU and memory usage. And you go to NT services, and you know you, you could be monitoring all those, uh, you know, EDI service or a, a rules engine, enterprise single sign-on, all those kind of BizTalk related, or even your own custom things, and say I wanted to make sure they all running, or, you, or even you can say I wanted to make sure these things are actually stopped, because you may wanted to keep your antivirus service in a stop state. You might have used a different approach for that, so you can match exactly how the services should be performing. And event log is, is, is again it's very very powerful. You can monitor a lot of things just with event logs. For example, I can say I wanted to monitor all the BizTalk related events, and you can say I wanted to say, for example, anything with BizTalk I wanted to monitor, 
or you can specify event id or even a text and then you can set a condition you know there are so many errors or warnings or information in the last n number of minutes you wanted to monitor so you can monitor you can you can go and add multiple of them you're not just restricted to one so this basically you know covers pretty much you know if i ask somebody the question like is it covering your monitoring on this one the more, more or less the answer will be yes because it covers pretty much everything you typically expect on a this attack and the same thing applies for sql server as well like just the servers are different but all the all the principles are same disk the system resources event log and the nt services another sql server instance this is primarily for the jobs that's running so you can see all the all the business related jobs you can select all of them and say you know must be enabled but you know some of them must be in a disabled state so you want these things to be disabled you can say you know must be uh, disabled now you, you can see it is turned green because it's exactly matching how your job to be running in your environment and also you can say i wanted you know the last status should be the last run status you can check that as well and you can make sure it's it's a, it's a, it's a successful so it's very very easy you know most of them you click and then you configure it and you can go to bistock environment and you can you know, monitor the, the host instances a web endpoint a database query even message box viewer uh, so 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 in that sense you know this, as you can see it's very very easy to configure and it's easy to manage you know if your things change in your environment you don't need to go behind your monitoring team or com team and ask them to change their rules and make sure it's up to date because that's another problem a lot of times you spend a lot of time configuring with a big enterprise monitoring solution and all of a sudden you deploy new artifacts into your environment and it just goes out of sync it's it's like you know development and testing it goes out of sync very quickly right so those kind of things can happen but in this case the, the bistock team can own the monitoring and they can control it whenever they deploy new stuff they can they can they can go and manage it and also we have things like you know for example if you're doing a deployment you don't want the uh, the environment to send false alerts so you can go to monitoring notification and you can say you know stop alert for maintenance you can say okay i wanted to stop it for certain duration maybe a day or 5 hours or something and then and then you will get uh, uh, there won't be any notification as a maintenance window you can do that and uh, the other important thing on the monitoring notifications you know you you see all the yellow alerts you know errors and warnings displayed here and you got some bunch of filters you know you don't want other errors you can, you can take it off uh, so you, you can do that these are the warnings uh, in, the, in the in the environment and also you got we got a nice uh, like a nice monitoring dashboard so if you if you go here so this is actually what we did just now you know december demo and it by default it shows only errors but if you want to show everything so this is what we done just now so people you know put it on a big display and then whenever you see something the red uh, then you probably know like you know there is a problem uh, uh, and then you, you can take action so so that's on the monitoring side of the story so you know like uh, next i'll just hand it over to ricardo so he she will cover the, the user access side of uh, this okay thank you so that's what ivana said uh, i'm uh, now going and show you how the the user access policy policy works and actually the best place to start with that is the settings area so i'm i'm just going to jump there and there is this user access policy entry and um, this is where you can create users many existing users and visualize users we have two different types of users that we can create you can create a super user which is pretty much uh, the same as running as a bitcoin administrator so they can do uh whatever they want um and then we can also create users that have specific policy and that's where the interesting part starts so i'm going to click here just manage existing users so that you can visualize here what can be done and so it, you can see we we uh, just created there is a user here create called mike watson and that's someone that has restricted access to this desktop system instead of having a full access and you can see we gave these user just permissions in certain applications not all of them and uh, and also then on the other options here we can see you can see that we gave specific permissions on which features these users can access and um so once we assign these we don't you don't need to do anything else so we don't you don't need to take these users and assign them to groups uh, within your ad uh these user just needs to log on and and access the system and actually just by doing this you will have a customized user interface that's adapted to your permissions and you know what i just opened here 
is uh, that user. You know, it's accessing the exact same URL, so localhost is also 360. And uh, the actual experience is uh, showing you that uh, th this looks like almost a totally different environment, but obviously it's not. So if you look into which machines are we targeting, uh, you can see that they are different. And another thing we can do, so if I go back here in my BizTalk uh, super user, uh, you can see that I'm running uh, with Saravana's user and uh, uh, I'm running as a, with a super user profile. If I go into this Mike's, Mike Watson session, you, can, you will be able to see that he's been identified as a different user and it has a custom access policy. And you can see now that if I click on applications, uh, this user only sees the applications that has been assigned to the same ones that we showed before. And additionally, so you can see here, let's go back to the profile of this user. You can, vi you can see that this user does not have access to um, act on service instances or applications or host instances. So you can see that now if I go into an application and I go into an artifact, so let me just choose EDI one, uh, I don't have here the options to change the status of this particular artifact. Uh, you know, if if you remember from the demo previously, so you 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 see that whenever I have an, a desktop application, I am able to uh, do. So let me go back to the same application. If I go here into an orchestration, you will have the options to change the status of this particular artifact I just selected. I can start, stop, and list and unleash. And um, and this functionality, because this user has not been assigned the, the permission to do so, cannot do that. And uh, if I want to enable that user it's, uh, to do that, I can simply go here and manage this user. I can say, OK, now you can do these operations. I can save the user. And then as, as soon as we refresh, um, this user will be able to see those op uh, operations. And he will also be able to actually do the same. And let, let me do that. So I'll start one of these orchestrations. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is um, one, uh, another feature that is totally related to the user access policy is the ability to, to have uh, governance auditing uh, information. So I just, you know, Mike Watson just started these orchestrations. And I'm going to do some additional uh, fun, uh, actions here. Like, let's say, I go now with my super user and uh, I restart the host. So I might go here to platform settings, host instances, and I'm going to well, start this particular host instance. Maybe I want to stop it again. And so as soon as this is done, you know, I've used Mike Watson to start a particular orchestration. I used uh, my super user to uh, change a host instance title. So if I go back here to governance auditing, you can see, so if I choose application activities, you can see that Mike Watson's just started an orchestration. And you can know when, you can know which orchestration, which application was affected. And so, and then if I go to service instances, you can see uh, Saravana has just, uh, um, sorry, host instances. Saravana has just stopped, started and stopped the particular uh, host instance. And so you can see how powerful this can be, so you can be able to backtrack what's happening in this system. And uh, now I'm going to hand over to back to Saravan. OK, I think now I'm just going to, you know, there are a lot of, uh, of uh, capabilities in BizTalk 360. You know, like we covered the two core areas, like the, the security aspect and the monitoring aspect. And uh, we'll just quickly, you know, like, uh, like uh, go through and see, like, uh, what are the other capabilities uh, present in the product. Like, you know, as soon as you log in, you know, like you can see there is a dashboard, and we have a lot of these dashboards throughout the uh, application. Uh, for example, as soon as you see you log in, you can see the number of suspended instances, and this dashboard is more dynamic. You know, if you don't have permissions to all these things, you will not see it. And whenever there is something wrong, you see some, something in a different red color, so, you know, you, know, you can dive into that and, and, and go and fix it. So the search artifact is this another uh, key feature. Like it's very useful if you have a if you have a big environment. Like uh, for example, you know if you have hundreds of orchestrations or or hundreds of uh, send ports or you know sometimes thousands of schemas deployed into the environment. 
it becomes really tedious for people to you know go search for those artifacts there is no concept of search in the, the admin control like uh, when we say search it's more of you know searching for design time artifacts for example you can say i want, I want to search on all the applications so this one you basically you know it listed all the applications in the environment but you know if you have like say imagine if you have like 200 applications you may want to filter down on all the edi applications you can do that so then you know like you can drill down and from here you can navigate to the application very quickly so this is we did it for a uh, specifically it was requested by one of a big uh, uh, company and then and then we had to do this and, and it's now part of the product and this is not not just for applications you can say you know for example uh, orchestration for schemas is a good good example you know there will normally be you know hundreds of schemas uh, present in the in your uh, in your environment and you wanted to quickly check you know when you have this famous uh, you know the, the multiple uh, root namespace error you wanted to drill down and see what the schema so you know like you can quickly say i wanted to drill down on soap schema and the root element name is body or something like that you can say you can filter it very very quickly and then you can view the schema and, and do whatever you want and same for you know like a uh, orchestration so this time maybe you know you wanted to filter down on the you know the status of the orchestration you know something is a starter uh, so you know you can filter it on you know something is stopped at uh, those kind of status and, and you can see these this drop down boxes are all context sensitive if i go to for example uh, transforms and then add a filter it is saying what is the source schema you are looking for what is the target schema you are looking for those kind of things so this is very very useful if you have like a, a much more complex environment uh, you are using and the applications i think ricardo would have touched a few times you know when he was showing the demonstration so there is a, there is a dashboard at the application level and you can start the application at at, at this level and everything is, is auditor and also 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 if you if you if you note you know like uh, we also hook up the host instance because you may have 50 host instances in the environment but only you know like uh, like five of them relevant for this particular application so you know in this case since this host instance is not started this application is not going to work correctly so we bring all those kind of intelligence to the uh, support side of things and you can go to orchestrations and you can manage all of them with the standard stuff what you would expect uh, in a, in a in similar to admin control but the main thing is it's all web based and it's accessible from from anywhere the message box queries it's pretty identical to admin console and you got the full uh, filter capabilities like you know application name you can do something like edi uh, or uh, you know simple messaging uh, uh, whatever and also the thing is you can also save them and retrieve them from the server because at the moment the admin console you can still save the queries but it's saved into a local disk but in this case since our since it's ours is a web based access you can actually save them and retrieve it from the server for example if i go open so it's already a couple of uh, queries already saved i can open up and it opens all the filter condition and then and then you can you can you can get to the query uh, the same with the uh, tracking data you, you can go and check it quickly uh, if you are having bam you can go to the bam data very quickly you know you can fill, choose the activities views columns you don't need to dive into the bam portal for that and custom sql queries is another great feature like you don't need to go to sql server to run your queries like you know like for example a large messages in the database so if you look at this one it's actually a very standard sql query you know like you just store all the standard useful sql queries and you give a useful name and then you can everybody in the team can access it and you have you have full rights as well you can control who got access to queries but it's all available you can take away you know you don't need to give a, a sql server access to people and if you're using the esb acceptance portal that is also available readily in the in the in this 360 you don't need to go to you know the esb portal to get those information so it's very useful like you know it comes as part of you know consolidating all the tools uh, otherwise you'll be using like you know six or seven different tools to do different kind of things as uh, the advanced event viewer is another thing you know you don't need to rdp into the box to check the event viewer so it's all readily available you can access them i mean the, um, another important thing is you can attach a knowledge base you know if, for example this is something 30011 is something is occurring all the time in your environment and you, you know why that is happening you can basically say okay uh, you know i know the answer uh, blah 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 and then and then and then and then you update it so so next time when when you when you when you when you get that uh, the same error uh, you you will see that information
So topology, you know, like it's, it's, a, it's a, it basically puts the, the server you know, environment topology. If you have multiple boxes, if you have like a proper network topology here, uh, the platform settings, you know, the, the standard stuff, like, you know, you can check the host, uh, what's actually, you know, uh, running inside the host, you know, what are the outer facing running, ports running, so all those kind of uh, nice things. Otherwise, you need to look at multiple places to get this information, you know, host instances, message boxes, uh, all, all those standard stuff. Uh, the tracking manager is useful, like, you know, if you wanted to visualize the tracking at, uh, at an application level, you know, what it, it's, a, it's in a single place. You don't need to go to multiple places to look for that information. Uh, SQL Server instances, you can access it directly from here. Uh, backup DR visualizer gives you what the health of your backup. You know, in this thing I haven't configured it, but if you have a PR environment, all you need to do is specify the PR and, and it will pick up automatically. So the message box viewer uh, is integrated deeply, so it runs uh, based on the schedule you do it on the settings, and you can you can choose the reports and you can see all the critical errors, non-critical errors. So everything readily available in the UI, and uh, I think we got covered the governance part. So you can see, you know, like uh, it's we wanted to Business 360 is focused on one single uh, thing. It's about all about operations. Like once your application gets to production, you know what are the various challenges you see and how we tackle them. That's all about the business.